Today I will write a vertex displacement shader in URP. So let's exercise and apply the knowledge from the previous episode in a real life example. I will use my favorite waving flag example for the demonstration, which I've previously covered for Unreal and Godot. By the end of this video, I will make this flag mesh to look like it is waving in the wind. I'm the Gujay Gohil and welcome back to the fourth episode of Shaders for Programmers series. All right, let's get started. All right, so I have this flag mesh, which has some extra geometry, which we need for vertex displacement to work nicely. All right, let's create our shader. And it doesn't matter what I choose because I'm going to write it from the scratch anyway. Let's call it flag displacement. Then let's create a material for our shader and apply it to my flag mesh. Double click to open our shader. In my shader, I'm going to delete everything. Now here, I will quickly write a simple URP lit shader, which I've explained in the third episode. So I'm going to go ahead and just type it down. Once again, I've explained this entire code in the third episode, and I'm going to upload a template file in my Patreon as well. Now, one important thing is in the shadow caster pass, I've included this common material.hlsl file, which is grayed out in the writer. That means that it is already included in core.hlsl or shadows.hlsl. But if I don't write it, in Unity, I will get this unknown identifier lob to white error in shadows.hlsl. So you need to include this file in the shadow caster pass. And here is my controversial take. The code base for URP and HDRP both are a dumpster fire and I fully blame the management of Unity. Well, it seems like I'm never going to get sponsored by Unity at this rate. All right, now if I look at my flag from this side, the back side of the flag mesh is not getting rendered. So to fix that in my shaders forward pass, here I'm going to set the curl mode, so curl off. That means render both side of my flag mesh. And I need to do the same thing in my shadow caster pass. So here I'll go curl off. Now I would like to set a checkerboard texture on my flag. And Unity obviously has a default texture for that, but I'm going to do that procedurally. So in the forward pass, I'm going to go to my fragment shader. First here, I'm going to define a variable half three color, which will be the final color. Let's set it to zero for now. And here in the surface.albedo, I'm going to go color. Now to create a checkerboard pattern, I need UVs. So in the attribute structure, let's read the UVs. So float to UV and let's tag it with okay, texture code zero and one is occupied. So texture code nets two. And in the varying structure, Let's catch them. So flow to UV again, texture coordinate set two. In the vertex shader, I'm going to go output.uv equals input.uv. In the fragment shader, let's visualize the UV. So half three v.uv and zero. So my UVs are zero, zero here and one, one here. Now for checkerboard, first I need a grid. So here I'll go float to grid equals v dot uv. And I want five by five grids. So I will multiply five here. So now in the grid, the uvs will go from zero up to five. And then I'm going to wrap the entire thing in the floor function. And floor function simply returns the integer part of the number. So if I input 0 0.5, I will get 0. If I input 1.2, I will get 1. If I input 3.7, I will get 3, and so on. Then let's visualize the grid. And grid goes from 0 up to 4. So I'm going to divide it with 5 so we can see better. 
And now I have grid boxes with ID 00 here, 01, 02, here it will be 10, 11 and you get the idea, right? Now first I will define two colors, so go half 3 white and I'm going to set it to 1 and 1 let's say gray and set it to 0.3 now here I want white color then here I want black again white same thing I want black here white here black and so on so to do that first I'm going to get rid of this and then I'm going to go basically I will check if grid grid dot x is divisible by 2 so I'm going to go f mode then grid dot x and 2 and then check equal equal 0 so f mode will divide this value with this and return the remainder so if the grid dot x is an even number I will again check if f mode of grid dot y divide by 2 equal equal 0 if so then I want my color to be white so I'll go color equals white otherwise I'm going to go color equals gray then in this else part I'm just copy this and just flip this and I have a nice checkerboard pattern but you can see that I have a lot of if else statements and if you've seen my shader optimization video you will know that this is a big red flag it is a good idea to avoid if statements if we can and in programming if we are only playing with numbers we can often get away by using some math functions instead of conditional statements so instead of all of this I can use some math function you can go ahead and pause this video to try to figure out the answer all right now I'm going to delete entire thing then here I will simply go color equals lerp of white and gray and based on this third input lerp function will determine what value to output if I pass 0 it will return white if I pass 1 it will return gray okay so here I can simply go f mod of grid dot x plus f mod of grid dot y divide by 2 and here pass 2 and if I hit save I have the same checkerboard pattern in a single line and these things will come from experience and practice okay so don't stress and let's see how this works so for this box I will have grid ID of 0 0 so here grid of x 0 plus grid of y 0 divided by 2 so reminder will be 0 so 0 plus 0 0 and reminder of that will also be 0 so this entire thing will return 0 so I'll get white now let's say for this box I will have grid ID of 1 and 2 so 1 plus 2 so reminder will be 0 so I'll get 1 and 1 divided by 2 reminder will be 1 so I will get gray and now you get the idea right and it's also completely procedural so if I go multiply 8 and save now I have 8 by 8 checkerboard all right now it's a time to displace this flag and for that I'm going to go to the vertex shader and here before transforming this input dot position local space I can mess around with it here to displace my mesh so in unity I have z axis points in this direction so if I want to move my flag back and forth I need to change the z value of the local position so here I will go input dot position dot z and if I go like 5 so my flag is moved 5 units in the 
z-axis. But now I want to move it back and forth, so I'm going to use the sine function. And sine function basically returns value between minus 1 and 1. And it takes input in either radians or degrees. If we talk about degrees, if I pass 0, sine will return 0. If I pass 90 degrees, sine will return 1. If I pass 180, sine will return 0 again. If I pass 270, sine will return minus 1. And for 360 degrees, sine will return 0 again. If we talk about radians, if I pass 0, sine will return 0. If I pass half pi value, sine will return plus 1. If I pass pi, sine will return 0 again. And if I pass 1.5 pi, the sine will return minus 1. And if I pass 2 pi, the sine will again return 0. So that's how sine function works, basically. Okay, I'm going to pass time. Now my flag is slowly moving back and forth. If I multiply some number here, it will increase the frequency of the sine wave. So basically how quickly it goes from minus 1 to 1. And if I multiply the entire thing with some number, that will control the amplitude of the sine wave. Basically how far it will wave in the z-axis. Now instead of hard coding these values here, I want to change them from the inspectors. I'm going to define two properties. So here I'll go properties. And let's go wave frequency. And let's label it wave speed. And this will going to be float, so float. And let's default it to 10. And one more wave amplitude. This will be the strength, so wave strength. And this will also going to be float. Let's pass 0.5. Now I need to declare these properties in my HLSL block. So here I'm going to go first C buffer start. Then I'm going to go unity per material and C buffer end. Then I'm going to go float. Now make sure I type the exact same value. So wave frequency and float wave amplitude and let's replace this 5 with frequency and this 2 with amplitude so now in unity I will have these two properties where I can control the speed and strength of the wave like this. Let me dial down the strength a bit, so 0 0.5. And now this flag is only going back and forth because for each vertex, I'll pass the exact same thing in the Z position. So to make it look like waving in the wind, I need to pass some different values for each vertex. Now if I select the flag in the unity, this is the x-axis in local space, so position.x will be different for all vertices. So let's use that. So here I will simply add input.positionls.x. And if I hit save, now my flag is waving in the wind. But I want opposite of this, so instead of plus, I'm going to go minus. Now I have one issue that the flag is not sticking to the pole. So to fix that, I can use UV. So here, I can multiply this entire thing with input.uv.x. And the x is 0 at this side, so the entire wave will attenuate like this. And if I want more control, I can simply use smooth step here. Let me just write it in the new line. So, smooth step of let's say 0, 0.8, and this. 
Now I have an entire video about smooth step but just a TLDR. Smooth step will return 0 if this input is less than this input. It will return 1 if this input is greater than this input. And for input that falls between these two, the values will be interpolated between 0 and 1 using Hermit interpolation. So here basically sine wave will attenuate from 0 up to 0.8 and then we will have the full sine wave in action. Alright, now I have another issue that I'm getting this weird shadow and that is because I've only displaced the vertices for my forward pass and not the shadow caster pass. So whatever I've done here, I need to do that in this shadow caster pass as well. So here I'm going to go to the vertex shader and paste everything. Now here I obviously don't have access to wave frequency and wave amplitude. So I'm going to copy that. So let's copy this as well. And let's paste it here. Now I also don't have access to UV. So in my attribute structure, let's define UV. So flow to UV and let's tag it with texture coordinate zero because it is free in this pass and as soon as I hit save now the shadow issue is gone and you can also see the shadow is actually mimicking the actual flag mesh. Pretty cool and I have intentionally made this flag as a checkered flag that signifies the end of this series. Now I would like to ask you what do you think was the most challenging part of this entire series? Let me know in the comments. And if you find this series helpful, definitely hit that like button and please share it. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next one.